I'm going to talk to you a bit about the Tideway project, the tunnel we're building, and the old tunnel that we're improving, and a couple of the sites uh, where we found some interesting archaeological finds. There's a lot of sites, we've got 24 of them, so I'm going to talk about every single one. But if you've got any sites to spot that you're interested in, do come and have a chat afterwards. So, I thought I'd show you... <coughs> Here's a picture of the, the route of the tunnel here. That's Acton, it's 25 kilometers and it runs all the way along the river to Abbey Mills pumping station. It's uh, between 30 and 60 meters under the river, eight meters diameter. And uh, I'll show you a section of it on Google Earth. Here we are here today, so you see the river. And the original system was built in the Victorian <coughs> period by Joseph Basil Jett, there he is there. And what he did uh, to improve uh, the sanitation <coughs> where raw sewage was emptying into the, the river at the time and after the great stink of 1858, uh, his idea was to constrict the Thames to make it flow faster and also to build a sewage tunnel to pick up all of the old sewers which were Things like uh, the fleet, the river, uh, which had been turned into sewers that were just emptying straight out into the Thames. So on here, this actually is the edge of the Thames where the green bit is there. And Basil Jet built out, built the Thames embankment, and within it is his sewage pipe that picked up uh, the sewage from those other outlets and took it away further down the Thames. Um, so here's the, actually I'll go back and I'll just show you, so on Google Earth you can see here's a site at Blackfriars, this is one of our sites, and we're connecting up to his system there, but going deeper and dropping down beneath his system and then going along, and here's another site here at Victoria, and this is close to us now, so this is the Victoria site, this is a section through Bazalgette's system at Victoria, so there's the embankment wall, Charing Cross Station, and then within it, that's the sewage pipe, there's the underground and a, a subway there. And the diagram above what we're doing, that's his section there, that you see there. So we're going, we're digging shafts at 24 sites, much deeper than that system. And there's the tunnel, the eight metre diameter tunnel that goes under and along the Thames. So this is the same site again, here and here's the shaft there being dug next to the embankment wall there you can see exposed it's quite uh, you may not see it exposed like that but when it is exposed now we've taken it down a bit it's actually a very beautiful uh, kind of honeycomb color the stone has turned gray over time that's the bit you see mostly above this is it <coughs> The embankment under construction there you can see there the gap where he's built out into the into the Thames this big bend there and there above. So to dig the tunnel we have four big machines, they're a hundred meters long, eight meters diameter, and uh, they have been dropped into four three holes, two in our central site at Kirtling Street drop down and they're going along either way and they'll come out here and here and there are two more that drop down there and there and they go along the other way. So here's two of them, this is Millicent and Ursula, that's the business <laughs> end. Those are cutting teeth on the front and because they're 100 metres long the shafts that we're digging are actually only, the biggest ones are around about 30 metres wide, so they have to be lowered down in sections and then built underground, and then they go along. So I'm going to talk to you about two of our so-called main drive sites where Millicent and Ursula went at Kirkland Street, and another one at Chambers Wharf, where we found some interesting finds. So these are the two sites, and um, that's the river in blue. Uh, the yellow bits are more recent Holocene mud of the Thames, and the darker bits are older geological deposits. Uh, the reason we're working 
in these areas is this is the old drainage patterns of the river which were then turned into sewers so this is where we have to pick up uh, the, the basal jet system um, but that gives you an idea of what <coughs> the river would have looked like a, a long time ago and how it's being uh, constructed now so this is uh, the shaft at Kirkling Street as it's beginning to be excavated. It's around 30 metres in diameter and around it there's a big shed uh, to keep the, uh, the noise down. <coughs> this shaft was being excavated 24 hours a day, seven days a week and the archaeologists were also working in there 24 <coughs> 7. I think it's the first time it's ever been done in, in the UK. Uh, and the sequence of deposits there, there's <coughs> roughly uh, 10 metres of deposits that we're interested in. And what we did, we knew that some of the interest in there was going to be of, of paleo-environmental interest, so that some of the sediments that have built up over the last 10,000 years in that location were going to be quite interesting. So we cut the the circle, if you like, of the shaft, like a cake on the way down, and created a section of what, uh, as if you could look at it like a geological section, and build that up on the way down. In and amongst trying to unpick the archaeology that has survived, and because it's wet, a lot of uh, waterlogged remains were found in there. So this funny diagram here shows you the sequence of deposits going from 10,000 year old sandy river deposits up through PT uh, deposits from about 6,000 years old and then the more recent uh, mud that you see similar to what you'll see <coughs> on the foreshore today on the Thames. So on the top left there's a, a fish trap, not unusual, I think it's about 10,000 years old uh, was within it, but that one was quite interesting because it contained timbers that we think are from uh, buildings possibly from the late Saxon period, so they're quite un unusual and they've been reused in that fish trap. There's a, a human skull that was found on its own. Um, and talking about the some of the, the science, if you like, that, that has gone on, so it's, uh, there's a very interesting sequence there that we've dated with radiocarbon dates with uh, <coughs> dendrochronology and another one <coughs> called OSL dating, which is when you can find out when a piece of sand is last seen the light. Other uh, <coughs> people have been looking at the environmental remains. So this is a diagram, it's a very unusual looking diagram of pollen. So that is essentially the top of the, the shaft, the hole, that's the bottom. And all these funny, like, these are the names of all the different types of pollen that we found within the sediments. So, here at the bottom, it's showing a lot of this one. It's birch and there's pine. That's a piece of pine pollen, or a, and it's uh, about a twentieth of a millimetre in diameter. And you can tell over time. So we were colder ten thousand years ago. These plants arrived here, they colonised, but then as we warm up, they disappear, and you get warmer species like this one, which is oak. And then later on, as people start to clear the area and start farming, we get things like cereal pollen. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that this is one of the best sequences in, in London to, to study this period. It's one of the most uh, complete, so it's quite interesting. For us, <coughs> in the, as we move up into the kind of later periods, um, this map here shows the site, that's where the shaft is. And you might not be able to read it, it says uh, Timber Dock there, and we, uh, sure enough, where it was marked on the map, we found a, a timber dock, <laughs> <laughs> which is also made of timber, and uh, in fact, it was also made of, uh, we didn't realise at first, it, it's not uncommon to find broken up ship remains to construct things like docks, but in fact this one, <coughs> that is the bottom of a barge there, and that is the... Uh, the side of the barge, so it's actually, they've taken out half a boat, a dun barge, if you like, it wouldn't have had its own sail, it would have been towed around. It's a 19th century 
uh, boat that has been then used as the side wall of a dock. And we think they were drying it out and closing off that end, so it looks like a dry dock. And they had a sump in the corner, a little um, area where they'd sunk barrels uh, to take the water away. And this is one of the barrels, it's got probably can't read it, 1830 carved on it. And some of the other markings make us think it's from Finland, so we think it's a, a tar barrel. They were burning the roots of pine trees uh, to make pitch to uh, waterproof ropes, rigging, and boats. It's got an unusual shape. A normal barrel is that shape, but it's but straight sided. Um, these are some of the timbers. Uh, I mentioned these structural timbers, the uh, possibly Saxon <coughs> timbers. These are all masts from ships that were used to, to make the, the dock there. You can see the circular ones, that one's octagonal. Um, here's the side of that barge, uh, made up from lots of photographs of photogrammetry showing it. Uh, that is the side of the hole, those are concrete piles, as are those two, the rest of it is all wood on the side of a, a boat. So that is the shed where the shaft is, and this is a, a painting of the same area uh, from 1761. It gives you an idea of what it would have looked like down there. And one of the, the interesting things for me, and thinking back to that Holland diagram I've shown you, is the area is called uh, Nine Elms, and those are elm trees there. Of course, they're all gone now. But, uh, and these are similar boats to the one we found uh, in the hole. So moving on to uh, Chambers Wharf, so we're, we're downstream. This is near Tower Bridge, and this is at the start of our works, and we've, we've built out into the river here. And the, the main shaft is uh, just it kind of appearing, this is before it was excavated in that area there. Uh, this is the start of the archaeological excavation at Chambers Wharf. This is the shaft, the circle of it, the river is this way. Uh, that's a, a 1960s river wall. The archaeologists are here recording a, a revetment from the 19th century. And then in this hole, you can just see appearing lots of other bits of wood here. And <coughs> what has happened here, if you see this piece of earth here, this is in fact a medieval mud wall, uh, uh, known as the, the Bermondsey Wall. And from that period onwards, people have built out into the Thames. <coughs> this way and we had a think in total about eight different sequences of revetments and walls that went that way so it was a very it was a very complex um, excavation to uh, to deal with uh, partly because they were constructing the shaft at the same time as archaeologists you want normally what you find is younger on the top and as you go down it gets a bit older but in this instance we were going across rather than down to unpick things in the right order. So you, you want to dig up the youngest things first and move your way back to the oldest things. We had to work from that side to that. Uh, so here's just a kind of snapshot of some of the, the kind of odd looking diagrams. These are the, the, the shaft, but all those numbers and bits are bits of wood that are being planned from 17th century river fronts, docks. Uh, here's a, a picture here of of one of them. I think that's uh, this area here. That piece of wood, you can't quite make it out there. But it was quite interesting. I'll show you here. When it came out, it was um, carved on all four sides with uh, Tudor roses. And there's a little bit of a puzzle. It's about two and a half metres in length. And originally, uh, were thinking, well, maybe it's part of a door, lintel, or something like that. But being carved on all sides, why would one side not be seen? So someone thought perhaps it was a newel post on a, the bottom of a staircase. 
And I rather like the idea that uh, someone suggested it might be part of a four-poster bed. <laughs> <laughs> but these, the nicer bits that we've recovered, again, at, at Chambers Wharf, there were ships, rudders, masts, all reused uh, within it. And the nicer pieces we've, also, we've sent to the Mary Rose Trust to be preserved. Um, here's another one that has... Um, Make it up as a word that V and John, we think that was a, the name of a boat. Um, these are some of the more unusual finds that came out of uh, Chambers Wharf. That's a, an auger, it's a wooden shovel, a sundial, and a, a medieval keychain. It had quite a lot of cannonballs there, which is quite interesting. And uh, <coughs> they used to use that bank as target practice from the Tower of Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> and another uh, rather strange find, this here is a section through uh, a, a large shell mint. And originally when we saw it, we thought, well, maybe these are the remains of, of people who have been eating winkles uh, and food. But actually, a closer look at some of these shells, and they turn out they're, um, they're freshwater mollusks. They're generally not eating uh, bithynia, I think is their name. So it's a bit of a puzzle because obviously the Thames is a, is a tidal river, it's salty water. So these are in a little freshwater pool behind uh, the Thames. And they're growing in enormous numbers. It was very thick, it was nearly a metre thick in places, so huge numbers of them. And again, we sampled the sequence like at Curtin Street to understand how the environment has, has changed over time. So some of you may have heard about this man who was found under the, was underneath uh, some of the, the earlier revetments. He's found face down in the mud. In fact, we found three uh, skeletons, not all as well preserved as, as this one. And I put this, this story kind of made it around the, the world a bit. This is the New York Times, but I put this in there. I thought you might find it interesting. It says, Britain's fishing or scavenging in the river. Thames are a rare sight these days. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not sure quite how he got there. Um, he had a, a broken nose, it healed in the past, a broken foot. So these are his leather boots, they were knee high boots. They, the style of the boots, I think they're Italian, must be uh, 500 years old. And they were packed with moss as well, which is preserved within them. And it may be that either he had a hole in his boot and he's trying to dry them out. Or I have heard they used to use moss as a field dressing in the First World War. And they had sores on his feet or something like that. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing he had was his teeth were worn down in a funny pattern. People have suggested he's perhaps working with um, uh, cords, perhaps making nets. You can use your mouth and your teeth as a third hand to tie knots and things like that. Um, but it also gives you a bit of an indication, perhaps, if he was mudlarking at that time, of uh, an idea to <coughs> keep yourself safe on the fourth <laughs> <laughs> And then, finally, we found... Um, so underneath, this is the, um, the earliest <coughs> the mud wall I was talking about, the, that the monks had built, uh, a medieval wall. I think it's uh, 14th century. <coughs> but in order... There were marshes behind in order to drain them. They built an early tunnel underneath. So the engineers were all quite impressed with this because the tunnel they built underneath to drain the marshes out into the Thames was constructed of hollowed out tree trunks. And you can't, maybe you can see the bark there on the, on the outside of one. And it's not too dissimilar to how the tunnels are being constructed today, but the tools they had available was quite a remarkable thing to have done really. Um, and that shows a section through how some of the mud bank was built up with wattle uh, to keep it stable. So that's it really, that's the end of the excavation when we walked away. We're now uh, about, that hole is I think, uh, 50 metres in, in depth and um, but we will go back there. That We have to ventilate the, uh, the shaft and we'll dig another hole I think should also hit some more interesting <coughs> remains in the same area.
So f- it's 50 metres below there was what was going on? From here down, so they, they threw into the geological deposits at that point. So right. we, we, at this point, we handed the site back to the, uh, the construction workers because we know that there won't be any archaeology surviving. It was human activity 50 metres below. No, 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 no. That's just us <laughs> digging. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Uh, was there originally meant to be an extension to pick up the Greenwich Peninsula on the Tyler Tunnel? Yeah, there is a, uh, there's, a there's an arm of ours that, that comes off past <coughs> Deptford. But no, how far, no, to pick up you know, all the new developments um, on the Greenwich Peninsula. I remember seeing a very early plan of the Tyler Tunnel. It kind of extended beyond like Deptford and Greenwich. Find the, um, let's see where you're talking about. Um, that's yeah, where it stopped there, 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 I remember seeing a very early plan, I mean early as in just relatively recently, um, where it kind of extended to pick up, um, you know, all the new developments on the Greenwich Peninsula, and then it seemed that it had been kind of pulled back for whatever reason. I'm not sure about that, as far as I know, that's the... It was only ever planned, so all the waste, that obviously, because there's the new developments, which obviously have, yeah. uh, that have been, you know, everything that's built to the... Uh, the east of um, Deptford and Greenwich. Um, what happens to all of their waste? Well, this isn't the only sewer in London. There are several that run. Actually, they they pick up. So Basildon actually built sewers further up and higher. He didn't just do this one. Yeah. The Thames, there, there's a, a massive network of them. So they run. <coughs> A simple sort of high and low level sewers that run past that area. I couldn't tell you exactly uh, where they are on that, but certainly, as far as I'm aware, on our project, that's where we yeah. 